So pre-calculus, sketching rational functions. So first thing I'm going to do here is this. First, I want to make sure that we're reminded that f of x, in the case of a rational function, is equal to g of x over h of x, where g of x and h of x are both polynomial functions. And we're going to find out something interesting about this. As soon as you get this, you should take a quick look, and hopefully you can see that we can rewrite this function, can't we? As f of x is equal to x plus 2 over so now I'm looking at this x squared minus 4, and I recognize this to be difference of squares. So I'm going to just break that out, if you don't mind, like this, x minus 2. This is called a removable discontinuity, otherwise known as a hole in the function. So if you can see that if x was equal to negative 2, you'd have negative 2 plus 2 here would be 0, wouldn't it? And then down here at the bottom, you'd have negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and 0 times whatever this mess is would be 0, wouldn't it? You got that? So really, this is the indeterminate form, indeterminate form. And the reason that's so important, especially when you get to calculus, is it will tell you that there's something hidden here, and we can, we can see what it is that's hidden. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a notation to myself that says that there's a hole at x equals negative 2. And I'm going to set myself up for success by putting this point here. Obviously, if I put in negative 2 now, it won't help, will it? So I'm going to go ahead and remove this discontinuity if we agree that x plus 2 over x plus 2 is 1, isn't it? So I'm just going to remove that. Remove that here and remove it here. And then put in 1 up here. Everybody good with that? And then I'm going to evaluate this, Harrison, because I want to know what this x value is now. So I put in negative 2 here, and I get negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, isn't it? So we have, we have a hole at the point negative 2, 1 fourth. And it's really important that at the end of our graphing we go back to that. Is that okay? Now we get to number 1. And the first thing we always look for is our x-intercept. x-intercept is when what happens? When g of x is equal to 0. I want you to remember, though, this is where I messed this up before, but I'd like to remind everybody that this is our new function right here, isn't it? Right? We're not looking at this parent up here anymore. We, right, we removed that discontinuity, right? So what do we know now about an x-intercept? No x-intercept. And that would have gotten in our way if we weren't so smart. We could have screwed up a whole video. Nobody knows that we made this video before and screwed it up, so it's good. Right? <laughs> so what comes next, you guys? Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is that number for Wooten. So what is that? What is that number? It's where h of x equals 0, right? Right? It's the uh, where this thing becomes undefined. So we have x minus 2 equals 0. x equals 2. We're going to put a little note around this and put VA for vertical asymptote. Third thing we're supposed to look for, y-intercept. I like that, don't you? An algebra y-intercept. F of, f of 0. So we have the point 0 something. F of 0 is what? Come on, here's the function right here. It's just one ha negative one-half, isn't it? One-half, so I'll notate that. Negative one-half, good job. And the fourth thing we're going to do? Horizontal asymptote. And this is what also you were just asking me about, horizontal asymptote. The way we're supposed to look at this is this. Formulaically, we're supposed to look at it like this. We're supposed to look at this this way. This zero, else we're supposed to look at uh, this one up here. We're supposed to look at it as x to the zero power. All right? And this is x to the first. And this is the n value, and this is the k value. And if n is less than k, the horizontal asymptote will equal y is zero. Isn't that right? Does that make sense? More practically, if you look at it, if this number at the top up here else is, is one, this number at the top is one, as this number at the bottom gets huge, this num the whole number itself gets much smaller, doesn't it? And it approaches zero. 
So we say that this thing is going to approach y equals 0. So y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. All right? We have enough pieces? So let's take the pieces and put them together. So we go down here. We build our Cartesian plane. After who? Rene Descartes. Two things about Rene Descartes. French and named after a woman. Okay, what do we have? Give me some pieces that we have, please. Horizontal asymptote, where? At y equals zero. So I'm going to just put that in like that. I'm going to label this y equals zero here. Do we have a vertical asymptote anywhere? x equals 2, so let's maybe call that x equals 2 right here if you don't mind. x equals 2. What else? What is the y-intercept? Say that again, 0, 0, negative 1 half. This is important, isn't it? Because we know we're trapped in here, right? Is there another point we have? The what? Oh, my gosh, good job. All right, so let's do this first. Let's do this. Good job there. Good. And where is the hole in the function? Negative 2, 1 fourth. So look, if you guys don't mind, I'm, I'm going to say, if you don't mind, it's right there. Is that all right? And it's a huge point. It's really not. Sorry. So if negative, t is it, it's negative 2 what? Negative 2, negative 1 fourth. guys right that's right so somebody asked me then how do we know what the, I think this thing does this on this side but how do we know how could we test it it's really easy because it's either gonna it's either under it's either under zero moving towards zero or it's over zero moving towards zero so it's either doing this or it's doing that how could we figure that out plug yeah plug in a value that's greater than two like f of three so what's f of three f of 3, our function is 1 over x minus 2. Is that right? So 3 minus 2 is 1. I don't care that you put that in. I'm going to put it in maybe here and just call this the point. We say 3, 1. And I don't want to argue about if that's good or perfectly uh, symmetric, uh, perfectly uh, accurate or not, but it has to do that now, doesn't it? All good? Okay. That was rather fun.